Archbishop de Roche, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule here at the Synod to speak to us. It's my pleasure, thank you. You gave your intervention uh, recently inside of the Synod Hall and you chose to speak about uh, specifically the role of women in the church and what we can do to maybe open up some, some further avenues. And a lot of people have been paying attention to that intervention in the days that followed. Uh, what led you to speak about that specific issue? Actually, that wasn't my specific issue. The, the issue that I was addressing was violence against women. Uh, and the first point of my intervention was to remind the Synod Fathers that recent statistics re released by the um, International Organization for Health, the World or Health Organization, uh, uh, tell us that nearly a third of all women are, uh, experience violence at the hands of their spouses. And that's uh, how can we at a synod on the family not address that reality, which is horrible. And, um, and so I, I suggested, and I reminded uh, the, the, the synod fathers that already in Familiaris Consortio 30 years ago, Pope John Paul II had decried this and had asked for a very specific commitment on the part of all church agents to, to fight this uh, scourge. Um, so I kind of threw back this to, to, to my brothers. I threw back this, uh, this call of John Paul II. And I suggested that as a church, the first thing at least that we could do is say that um, we cannot, nobody can justify this kind of dominance of women by men by claiming biblical justification for it. You know, mm -hmm. that uh, it's a false reading of scripture to be able to, um, to claim that men can dominate over women this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I specifically refer to the passages in Paul's letters where he speaks about women be submitted to your, submit to your husbands, that those texts cannot be read in a way that justify this kind of dominance and the violence of men against women. And we should say that loud and clear. So that was the first point of my text. Right. Um, but then in the Instrumentum Naboris, because what I'm doing is, is uh, responding to number 29 in the Instrumentum Naboris that brings this up, the Instrumentum Naboris goes on to say that in connection with this, a uh, greater profile of women in the church can be a way that the church itself manifests the equal dignity of uh, women and men. Right. And so I said, well, I would, I would like to make three proposals in that regard. And the three I made was, uh, first of all, to really look at which positions exist within the Roman Curia and within uh, our diocesan Curia, positions of authority, decision-making uh, positions that could be open to women. Mm -hmm. Um, could we make a real concerted effort to uh, assign those positions to women? That would be one thing we could do. A second is perhaps we could give permission uh, to married couples, men and women, um, who are well trained and accompanied to uh, speak within the Sunday homily, uh, where they would speak about the link between, the connection between Scripture, the Word of God, and their lived experiences married couples and as parents. Um, that would be another way uh, to highlight the dignity of women within the church. And the third uh, that I said is uh, perhaps now is the time to study seriously the possibility of, of opening the permanent diaconate to, to women right. because that issue is not closed. It's still an open issue. So it was uh, those three suggestions which I made were really ways of saying can we in the church manifest as an institution the equal dignity of women? This would be a very powerful sign to all married couples that women cannot be, should never be treated, uh, abused, uh, treated with violence or denigrated right. within the couple or within the family. And so far as we can tell, uh, you're not the only person to pick up on this on this subject inside the synod. That there are other synod fathers as well raising this question of especially violence against women and the inequality between men and women in, in some parts of the world. But uh, based on the three uh, uh, suggestions that you made, uh, some people are reading into that. Well, you know, if we were to examine some of these things, it automatically opens the door for women's ordination, for example, which we know that 
Well, it's ordination not, to the priesthood. To the priesthood, yes. which is not uh, something that, that people believe that the church is open to. So how, how do you respond to that, that reading or that reading into uh, your suggestions? Well, I, I would say let's take the pro proposals for what they are and, and not see them as a kind of a conspiracy to attain other goals. I, I'm looking right now at what is possible to give women a greater role within the church so that the church can be enriched by women's gifts, but also for the church as an institution to manifest before the world uh, an attitude that needs to be taken up by all institutions in the world and, and by all married couples. Um, I would find it sad that the suggestions be brushed aside because of a fear of other issues. You know, uh, so I'm hoping they are taken for what they are and looked at and studied in that light. You're one of the uh, the few bishops who uh, was actually at the synod last year, the extraordinary synod of bishops on the family. You, you were there in your capacity as the president of the Canadian Bishops Conference, uh, and so this question uh, of continuity is very interesting to me. You have seen it firsthand, up close. Uh, why do you think that's so important and do you see it having an effect on this synod? I, I would say it's the first reason that I was elected by my brother bishops uh, in the CCCB to come back as a delegate. Uh, um, I told them you're not giving, doing me any favors by electing me to come back, you know, because it is uh, a lot of time spent away from our dioceses and it's a big sacrifice. Uh, but their response to me was, we felt that continuity is important, um, that this uh, two-step synodal process, you could say, of the extraordinary assembly and then this general assembly, uh, for the process itself to work, it is important that be, there be a good number of uh, bishops who have participated in both. Now, um, obviously, the bishops who work in the Curia, who are heads of dicasteries, who were here last year, are here again. The patriarchs of the Oriental churches are here again. Uh, a number of presidents of conferences who were here last year have also been re-elected by their peers to be here again. So I, I would venture to say that uh, at least a third of the members uh, are, are here again. The continuity is important because in a sense what we are doing in the, the structure the traditional general assembly, we, we would spend the first week and a half, two weeks um, in the small groups trying to bring forward proposals, propositions that, that gave birth to a text that, that we would call, you know, the, the, the preliminary sketch, you know, uh, there's an official word for it, but the relatio post disceptationem is what right. it was called. It was, it was the midterm report. The midterm report, that's right. Year, so yeah. that midterm report then became the text on which we worked. The, the midterm right. report came from the small groups. That midterm report was then rediscussed in the small groups and re elaborated and polished to give the final report. This time there is no midterm report. What we have is the instrumentum laboris, which is the fruit of the first synod. So yeah. we're, we're starting kind of in the midstream of, of the synod. So that's why it's important to have people who were there in the writing of the first one so that, so that it, it can carry forward. Uh, even in my small group this morning, I pointed out, I was able to point out why a certain paragraph was here, why a certain paragraph was there, what the dynamic had been last year that had given birth to that. And, and then the other members can go, okay, now we understand. And then it's easier to kind of uh, enrich it right. once you have that. So I think that's why that continuity is important. We're, we're still there, um, uh, you know, working, working through this. There's still a lot of work to, to go, obviously. But do you see it having, I was going to ask you, do you see it having a practical impact on the conversations? Like when you're talking about, you know, when you say, well, we talked about this before, now we can move on. Do you see th that the group is able to, to move forward deeper yes, into the issues. Yes, because I'm not the only one who was there last right, year. Right. You know, there are others who are there. So it's clear for me that that continuity is, is working in that sense. Yeah. It is working. Um, 
and you, we also have to recognize that because of the structure, you know, the, the idea that there was a first consultation, then another consultation, a lot of these, a lot of what is in the Instrumentum Laboris, uh, the working document, came up out of those uh, consultations, right, right. national consultations, so that the bishops who are coming here are not coming, um, you know, without this uh, background of information and of reflection. So they're ready to work. And uh, I think, yes, it, it's, a, it's a good uh, process. Now, it's not an easy process, you know. It really isn't easy. And we were seeing it this morning as, uh, you know, like uh, in our group, we all agreed the first part, oh, it, 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 it isn't, um, it's too analytic, it's too sociological. It should be more um, how uh, bishops whom we are, men of faith, are looking at the reality of families. That's not coming across enough, you know. And, right. But how do you rewrite a whole first document? You can't do that. Right. You can't do that. What we can do is modify a paragraph here, a paragraph there, add a point here or there. So, and then we're doing that in our small groups, but I mean, how many small groups are there in all? 13, 13. I think, yeah. So then each small group is doing this. So all, <laughs> all the secretaries, and I'm one of them, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be coming together and we have to compare all this and try to come up with a new single joint text. Right. Uh, that's a, a lot of stuff is left on the floor by the time this is done. Certainly, you know, yeah. yeah. One final question for you. Um, a lot of people speak about the influence of, of Pope Francis on this two-stage synod and the synodal journey and, and what he's trying to emphasize. An uh, unexpected moment uh, earlier in the week uh, where the Pope actually felt the need to speak. Uh, to the Synod Fathers, and, and he said, look, we're not just speaking about divorced and remarried Catholics, uh, and, uh, you know, we have a document that we're working on. The small language groups are very important. Um, you know, what do you see as his role at this particular stage of the development of the Synod, and, and what do you think he's encouraging the Synod Fathers to yeah. do? Actually, um, my reading of the Pope's intervention was, uh, first of all, he simply, I think, wanted to confirm the work of the Secretariat. Mm. A lot of people are asking a lot of questions. This process is new. Um, how does it work? Who decided this? How come these people are there? So the Pope just wanted to say, look, I've accompanied this all along. You know, I was there. I approve this. Don't worry, this is good. Mm. You know, it was kind of a word of confirmation. And then in his off the cuff way, and he says, and by the way, you know, um, the sin that is only only just is not only about you know communion divorced and right. uh, remarried Catholics so the media try to make it that you know he says we have a lot of issues before us and let's be open to that and not forget that so it was just a kind of that, that wasn't a major point of his intervention yeah. his point was to say he is very aware of the structure of the process it has his blessing he's inviting us to enter it with trust as he, as he said in his opening um, text, you know, the Synod is a safe place, is a safe place to allow ideas and experiences and convictions mm -hmm. to be expressed, to be confronted one to another. And it is that confrontation of ideas that the Spirit will bring new light, and it's that new light that we want to find. Archbishop, thank you very much for thank taking you. time it's to speak Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much, Sebastian.